when my grandfather was in the military, uh, he got summoned to rush to an orphanage that had been bombed and was now burning. And my grandfather, against orders, rushed into the building, came back out with one of the children, and was immediately told by his commander to not return into the building because they felt like it was structurally unsafe. My grandfather heard it, turned right back around, ran into the building, and grabbed another child out, and he proceeded to do, do so four more times. He was very clear on what his mission was, and he was relentless in pursuit of it. The difference between resilience and relentlessness is very simple. Resilience means maintaining. Relentlessness means moving. Resilience means standing your ground. Relentlessness means moving forward. A fighter is relentless. Punching bag is resilient. Blackberry was resilient. Apple was relentless. Admission is so important in business, isn't it? In what you do every single day. If you don't know, and I'm not talking about a mission statement. I'm talking about understanding exactly where you are headed every single moment. Because if you don't know that, it's not going to happen. And the way that we know it's going to happen is something I call the yes test. And all it is, it's very, very simple. It's identifying three pains that you know you're going to encounter in order to achieve your mission. But when you identify your three biggest pains, it can't be my wife, my wife, my wife, <laughs> which is a response that, <laughs> that I once got. The next step is, is, is something that I, I like to call the Galileo test, which is the ultimate gut check. Does anybody remember Galileo? Galileo lived in a time where the entire world believed that Earth was the center of the universe, not the sun. And he put forth the theory of heliocentrism, that the sun is, in fact, the center of the universe. And at the time that he said this, he was considered a heretic, and he was under house arrest after refusing to retract his position for the rest of his life. And what I think of as the Galileo test is, are you willing to be publicly humiliated and laughed at for your mission? That's really the ultimate gut check. And when I say this, I'm not sure where your mind is going right now, but how about this? Pretend it's 2008, and we're in a pitch meeting, and you're a VC, and I'm trying to raise money, and I say, I've got this phenomenal idea. I am starting a transportation company that has no cars. Uber. Are you willing to be laughed out of those meetings? Do you really know what your mission is? And if you can answer yes, to the, your three pains. If you can answer yes to the Galileo test, the ultimate gut check, then I think you can proceed in confidence. But as I said before, relentless is not about withstanding. Relentlessness is about moving forward. One of the most important things that you can do in life is not just know that you need to take a next step. You need to know your next step. You need to fully understand it. And it's not always a step forward. Sometimes it's lateral. Sometimes it's backwards. I mean, imagine playing a game of chess if all you could do is move forward. How do we keep stepping? How do we keep moving when we encounter adversity? I hope no one in the room is familiar with what's on the slide right now. That is called a vacate order. And we were getting thrown out of our space effective immediately. Not because we didn't pay rent. This was not an eviction. This was because there was a major zoning issue that unbeknownst to me resulted in a vacate order. So what happened? I had a homeless gym. That's a little inconvenient. <laughs> I decided to, I, I went to lunch uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, his, his name is George, he's a Green Beret. I go, man, I, I don't know what to do in order to get forward momentum. And he says to me, well, there's three questions you need to ask yourself. How can it hurt us to stay? How can it help us to step? And what can we do? Those questions crystallized everything to a degree where it became so clear that my next step was not to withstand, not to be resilient, but to move, to be relentless, and to grow. I, you know, I mentioned my grandfather. May of 1945, uh, he was on a, on a, uh, a death march. He was incredibly sick. 
obviously no food. They're out facing the elements. They're really not stopping. And they're quite literally walking this entire way. May 11th, uh, 1945, they stopped uh, for the night. You know, I would say that he went to sleep, but I doubt that he really slept. He awoke to gunfire. And in his mind, the gunfire was the execution of his peers. But then he heard something that he didn't quite recognize, but he knew what it was. And it was English. And he knew at that point in time when he heard the shouting in English that he was being saved. And he saw Germans fleeing and running. He continued to hear gunfire. And he was rescued. But this is why you never stop stepping. This is why I want you to be relentless. You never know the joy that tomorrow might bring when you are relentless. Stop being resilient. Be relentless.